Five months ago, I made a video reaction to The Sirens of the Deep, which should be an animated adaptation of The Little Sacrifice that Netflix will release at the end of the year. In the video, I said that the animation art style of this movie looks bland and boring. Netflix used this type of animation in the past for The Nightmare of the Wolf, Castlevania, Dota, Dragon's Blood, Blood of Zeus, and this year they should also release Tomb Raider, The Legend of Lara Croft. You've probably seen it in the superhero animated shows and movies as well. It's used for so many projects that it became generic in my eyes. What I also don't like about it is how straight and uniform the outlines are and that the shading is very basic. I understand it's easier to animate, but it only makes it look even more generic and bland. Also, nothing against Americans, I think there can be cool and unique animation styles from the US, but because this simplistic art style is mostly used by American productions, it's connected with American culture in my mind. So seeing it being used for The Witcher, which is very European, just seems off for me. As I said in the video, I would want to see something more unique that's also fitting for the culture when it comes to The Witcher. I mentioned in the video that even our old Czech animated fairy tales have way more character than what Netflix is doing with the generic animation. And yeah, European animation has a pretty rich history and so many different art styles. For example, I recently came across this YouTube video titled A Beginner's Guide to 1970s Czechoslovakian Animation, which shows how unique and full of character European animated films can be. The first film mentioned in the video is Fantastic Planet, which was a French and Czechoslovak collaboration, and coincidentally the French animation will be one of the main subjects of this video, because I recently came across a fan tribute to The Witcher by this French studio. And I have to say that this is amazing. It's specifically a tribute to the Grain of Truth short story. I wouldn't say it's perfect and I could still imagine some things a bit better, but what I like about it is that it got the visuals and atmosphere of the Witcher world pretty spot on. For example, one thing I love about the Witcher is that it's pretty ordinary compared to most mainstream fantasy worlds, which are very epic in many aspects. And one thing I like about this animation is that Nivellan's house isn't this big, intricate fairy tale castle that we know from the Disney version of Beauty and the Beast and many other adaptations of that fairy tale. I never pictured it like that because Nivellan's grandfather and father were just some ordinary robber knights, so they wouldn't live in some big fairy tale castle, but of course that's how Netflix portrayed it because their show is made by normies who probably read the Grain of Truth short story and immediately went, oh, this is just a twist on Beauty and the Beast. That means Nivellan has to live in this big fairy tale mansion like we know it from Disney. I really hated their version of Grain of Truth. And going back to that French animation, I love that Nivellan's house is just this small and ordinary manor. It's nothing epic. I personally pictured it sort of like a smaller version of that old manor in Vizima from The Witcher 1, which looks even more ordinary, but the version from the animation is just so much better than what Netflix did that I would be pretty satisfied with this as the definitive look, even though I could still nitpick certain aspects, like for example that the garden looks way too tidy and I picture it more overgrown and neglected, but as I said, that's nitpicking. Another thing I like about the animation is that the outlines also aren't straight and uniform as with the Netflix animated shows, so you can see how much better the animation immediately looks when the outlines have different width in certain places thanks to the pen pressure. I understand that this is harder to animate and I can already hear people saying that this would be much more expensive to make, that's why this is just a short teaser instead of a full-blown adaptation of the whole short story. To that, I would say that Netflix has to be investing huge amounts of money into projects like Arcane or Love, Death and Robots, so why couldn't they invest in something like this and make some spin-off from the world of The Witcher with this art style? They clearly have the means for it, and it seemed that they were pretty serious about investing in this IP before Lauren Hisrich and her screenwriters managed to run it into the ground. But anyway, I also like how detailed everything is in this animation, especially the environments. 
I'm not sure if it's really the case, but it seems that that's typical for French animation, because this aspect reminds me of a game called Valiant Hearts, which was made by Ubisoft Montpellier, so also French. I highly recommend the game, by the way. It's very charming, although sad at times, since it's about the First World War. But speaking about how detailed the French animation often seems to be, I tried to search for some examples of French animation on YouTube and right away I found this video which shows how much more unique European animation looks compared to that stale art style Netflix uses for almost all of their cheaper animated shows. And I think that this French animated tribute just supports my original point, that The Witcher needs some different art style that's more unique, because look at the character designs for example. They are kinda peculiar, but I like it. So anyway, if you haven't seen the animated tribute, definitely go watch it, I wholeheartedly endorse it. And one last thing before I finish the video. It seems that French people really love and understand The Witcher, because this is the second project they nailed. The first one I also want to mention is their illustrated versions of the three short stories. The Witcher with Foltest and Striga, The Lesser Evil with Renfrey and Stregobor, and The Last Wish with Yennefer and the Djinn. First of all, the books have a really big format, which is great when it comes to the illustrated versions. They are all illustrated by a different artist, and the first and third one are good, but the second one is excellent. I actually already used illustrations from this one in some of my previous videos, and this is how The Witcher should look in my opinion. It's illustrated by Hugo Pinson, if I pronounce that correctly, and when you google his work you can see why it's so good, because the guy clearly understands armors, castles and medieval visuals in general really well. I want to make another video where I'll talk about this in more detail, but if you can get these, I highly recommend them, because they are beautiful. So that's all for this video, I want to thank French artists that they are representing The Witcher in ways I really like, that fits my tastes. See you next time everyone.